How was everyone's Thanksgiving? If you celebrate Thanksgiving, how was it? Was it fantastic? What did you eat? We have a brand, look at this. You guys might be blinded by my palate. It's so fresh and new. It's so fresh and so clean. clean. So clean, clean. London's here. All Everyone's here. Alright, we're gonna do like a wintry sunset, sort of similar to one of my old, old, old tutorials. But we're gonna put some mountains in, make it all kind of crazy, right? So let's do this sunsetty kind of sky. We'll take a little bit of cad yellow, a little bit of our bright red. Just the littlest bit though, mix them over here so they stay bright. We don't need it to be too red, right? Drag it out like that. Tap your brush in, make it nice and you know, evenly distributed onto our our bristles, right? Let's go up like this. Just make these crazy, this angled sky like this. Just dropping it on. Don't even really need to blend it out, right? Let's go into a little cad, uh, the yellow ochre, a little bit darker. Mix that with the red. Just a little, a little bit of red, right? We'll have this darker color. Again, we're making these swipes on an angle, right? So what everyone do, what was your favorite thing you had for Thanksgiving dinner is the question, right? My Thanksgiving plans kind of got thrown a little bit, but we made it work. We made it work. So what everyone else do is the question. A little bit of red, just straight red over here. And we primed our canvas with Bob Ross liquid white, just very little amount. Don't need a whole lot, right? Let's go a little bit into our crimson up here. Do, 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 do. We have sap green, dark sienna, uh, the, I think it's phthalo blue, could be Prussian blue, I can't remember what we brought out. Lizard and crimson, uh, the mountain mixture, or just uh, midnight black, titanium white, bright red, yellow ochre, and cad yellow, just in case you're just tuning in. Get a little bit of our crimson up here, want it nice and kind of dark crimson-y up in here. And again, we haven't blended these together yet, they're going to blend as we hit it with the two inch brush. So don't worry about that. Nice, bright, soft, pink sky. Might not even do any clouds. Just a little bit of crimson on there. All we really need, right? We're gonna get a little bit of blue, mix it with that little bit of crimson. Make this real dark, kind of purpley color. Oh yeah. See, just the littlest touch of blue though. You don't want it to go too blue. It's gonna to be too blue up there. So a couple swipes through the blue. More swipes through the crimson. Make that dark purplish color, right? And I like that color so much. We're gonna put some of it down here as well. Not gonna see a whole lot of the yellow in the reflective snow or water or whatever we put down here, right? I'm just gonna kind of cover it just so we have this nice soft kind of purplish color under here. Might be the might end up being the shadows underneath our snow or something. And yours might look different. You're not going to have the exact same mixture of paint on your brush, right? It's going to look a little bit different, so don't worry about it. Right? Differences in color, babe. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. Okay, let's start up here in the uh, in the yellow, right? Right up in the brightest area. We're just going to back and forth strokes. Just crisscross them like this. Just like that, but in fast motion. Like we're being fast forwarded on a video. And now we're done. And now we're done. And thank you for tuning in. And the painting tutorial is now concluded. All right. You can see with that liquid white, the more we mix down, the lighter it gets. And that is the best part, to me anyway. About painting with the white, you get this graduation of color and it kind of blends in with its own self. Really neat. Now that I've gone up into that dark area, I don't want to come back into the yellow. So we're just going to drop whatever else is on the brush down here, make this kind of misty, kind of light, foggy area. And then you don't even really need to do this. It's going to get swiped over so many times, it's not really going to make a difference. This is what we wanted right here. Gonna knock some of the paint off of this brush. Did was, anyone answer about what was their favorite? Was, yeah, sorry, I was doing something. Oh, no worries. Um, 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 Annette Babcock says, my daughter's soup she makes from the leftovers. The soup, that's a good, that's it a good thing. Yum. I like pie. Hey, more, John you know. Krasniak's here. Hey, John, I was thinking about John last night, actually. Yeah, me too. About how his dad was and how he was doing. 
There we go. Nice and blended. I don't even think we're going to touch it with any clouds this time. Why, right? Why, why, would we, why would we do anything to this nice, pretty, soft sky? I love it. Maybe we'll put just a couple white clouds in there. Just a couple soft little, little floaters, and they may even end up disappearing, right? We're just dropping it on with a palette knife. And then we're going to come back with our one-inch brush and just very lightly blend all that kind of white. Just very soft, very soft little bit of cloud. See what I mean? Kids and the more and more you do it, the softer and softer it will become until you almost have nothing there. I give up with this printer. Oh, the printer's giving you grief, huh? Dang yeah, printer. It's just error printing. Why couldn't you print? Let's put a little bit of just crimson and white underneath here. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. And just play with it until we like it, right? I like playing with it. Got to play with it. Right, the more and more we mix that up with that crimson and white into this yellow, it just kind of bounces off of itself. Look at that. You get this beautiful bit of cloud, nice little floating, soft little bit of cloud. Right, and the more and more you push on it, the more harder, the more and more pressure, the more it's going to disappear and be nice and soft. So again, just play with it until you like the way that it looks. Right, you can come back and add a little bit of white on top. Hey! Oh, it's printing, holy cow. There it goes. I'm gonna print out my shipping label. We sold the painting the other day. We did. Well, we sold we the didn't. painting. I didn't know anything. Almost to 300 sales on Etsy. Tonya Vickers says, hey! Hey, hey. Her, her, her. Geraldine Kenny, who, by the way, is watching from Ireland. Ireland. That was a horrific. Is thing. that bad? Oh. Yeah, even mine was bad. Yours was definitely worse. Oh, well, sorry. Um. Bring some of that white out here on its own. Hey, look, it looks like a shipping label. What does? The thing that just oh, came out the printer. We're going to stick that on that box downstairs. Well, that's good. Uh, she says, if you overblend, can you go back over it? Um, well, once you, what I always say is just don't overdo it. Because it's hard if you overblend it to then add more paint. I like having less paint, right? We don't cover everything because eventually everything as we work down is going to have another layer and another layer and another layer. So I try doing less. So if you've done too much, you got to stop. You have to stop yourself from doing too much. You guys know how I love my chemtrails out here in the sky. Beautiful. Beautiful. Looks fantastic on the television over here. So who did any Black Friday shopping? And if so, what did you stand in line for? How long did you wait? That's the question. All right, let's mix up a little bit of our black or mountain mixture. I never like to go at the mountain. Even if we're using the mountain mixture, I still mix it and make my own kind of shade. All right, so we're going to mix this up into a couple different piles. Right, I want to add a little white to it because we're going to have a couple mountains in this one. One further away, one a little bit closer. So I want to have the one that's further away have a little bit lighter color to it. Right. So we're going to take a little bit of the dark. Mix it up, and then you'll be able to see we have two separate piles, one lighter than the other. Can you guys see that? Am I holding it onto the screen? Yes. <clears throat> Let's see. Does YouTube want to be zoomed in, or is it zoomed in already? It's not zoomed in, but I can happily zoom it in. We should zoom in one of them, because people always say, oh, she zoomed in closer. Oh. Let's finish the edges over here while, while Lemon's playing about. You're giving everybody motion sickness. We're going to finish the sides just with that same kind of whatever. We've, we've used this brush and not washed it, so it literally has all these purples and, <laughs> and yellows all over it. Beautiful. Annette Babcock says, I made the mistake of Black Friday shopping once. Once. Never again. Yeah, I don't like doing it either. I really don't. All right, now let's throw our, our lighter color mountain, right? Whatever kind of gray you chose. It doesn't want to, you don't want it to be too white because it's going to mix with the, the liquid white and the other colors that are up here. So let's chuck this mountain like just way back in here, right? It doesn't need to be super pointy. And we're just dropping on the color, kind of creating the shape that we want. We don't want it to be too, you know, straight. At least I don't like them to be too straight. So throw a little, throw a little character on it. Right? Don't even have to go to the side. I'm going to drop some of that color down in here. 
because as we blend this out and pull it out, you're going to have these little differences in color from this random dropping of paint, right? It'll be a little bit darker up here, it'll be a little bit lighter down here, a little darker over here. We'll have this kind of in between that'll blend in and scrape up all that extra paint because you don't need, you know, if you have too much, it's going to be way too thick and it's going to grow way too far. So, scrape it off. You're not going to hurt the canvas if you scrape at it, right? You can get a little bit of paint off. If you get enough off, you know, you don't have to put on so much. But if you get enough off, you can throw it back on your palette. A very light amount of pressure I want to pull over to the side and not even go to the edge right just very light amount and again this is why we scrape off all that paint if you have too much paint it's gonna drag really quickly to the side there we go now we're gonna push a little bit harder and pull this guy out and then very you know as we get out further we kind of pull our brush away give it less pressure Right? You can tell the difference if you listen. Very hard, very light, very soft pressure. Saving some of this yellow in there. And again, you can see where we have all these little differences in color just from randomly dropping the paint on, right? We literally make these up as we go along. I don't know if you guys know that. Some of the real fans know. Throw grass in the attic to the back in full, there we go. in full effect. Whew, man, I like this one. This mountain looks fantastic already. And because we did that randomness, it will tell you where you can highlight stuff, where you should have some shadows. Maybe put some highlight over here and have this in shadow. It's, it's telling us what to do. Or highlight this whole little section and shadow this side, right? Whatever yours looks like, that's what you, you need to do with it, right? Hey guys, can you do me a favor? If you're watching this video right now, can you share it somewhere? Oh, share the video somewhere. Facebook, Instagram, any way you can share it, share it, please. Uh, text it to your roommate, Good to idea, your wife, London. anybody, please. Okay, let's take a little bit of the red, a little bit of uh, the white. How would you make Barbie's skin tone like that? That's Barbie's skin tone? I would say so. Well, a now, little bit of the crimson. Not so much. Right, now she's like bruised Barbie. She's like Ken, Ken, a, a, a domestic, yeah, domestic Ken bar. Domestic violence boy. Okay, we're just going to go about half of the mountain, right? The other half's in the shadow. We don't need to really worry about highlighting it because our brains will do it for us. I was a little insensitive. Yeah. Ken doesn't have a drinking problem. We know, we know, we know. Remember, this one's really far away, so you don't need a whole lot of, of detail. And we're being very light with the knife kind of allowing that paint to drag off of it, right? We've explained that before in our other videos, but if this is one of your first videos that you're watching, you kind of grab up a roll of the paint and then just, you know, at the same angle of your canvas, if your canvas is flat, do it this way. If it's on an angle, do it that way. But hold it very slow, uh, very, you know, similar to the angle of your canvas and then just let that paint roll drag away. As soon as you hear your knife kind of touch the canvas, you already know you're out of paint. Right? So very lightly, and then don't go over it too much. If you go over it too much, you're going to ruin all these cool little breaks and cool little things where it did it you know, on its own. Let's put a little bit of the, the dark color back in here. Just very light, very small amount of paint, right? I barely have anything on the knife because I don't want it to be super dark and super noticeable. Just kind of want to get it to be back there. Right? A couple little things just helps give it a deeper shadow back there, right? Literally scrubbing the knife on because there's barely any paint on it. Wherever it ends up, that's where it ends up, right? Now we're gonna come in, you know what we're gonna do? Put a little bit more of that lighter snow color down over here. Just brighten this area. Pull it out at the same angle that your brush did, right? It's telling you where to go. So listen, listen to it. Come over here, maybe we got a little bit right there. It's just. It's fantastic. Look at that mountain. Look at this mountain. And depending on how you pull your knife or how many times you go over it, you can soften it. It's going to mix with that darker color paint underneath, so it'll hey, change Dane, say, color. Say hi to Kay, uh, Kay Campbell. She's here, but she's got to go because she got called into work. How oh, do, boo. How do they do that? Yeah, you can't call someone into work on a Sunday. You can't call someone into work during a Josh Kirk and Paint with Josh <laughs> life. During a Paint with Josh? That is not okay. Right? It's just wrong, guys. Uh-oh, it's break time down the steak flower. For me, anyway. Let's turn this off. Boop. We could leave. We should try leaving it on one time for the entire time. 
That would be really <laughs> annoying, and I think people would sign out. I think they would. They'd be leaving. Like, what is this horrible noise? Right? The more and more you play with it, the more and more your mountain will change, and you'll get these cool little things happen all on their own that you didn't even plan, right? Let's take a little bit of the blue with that kind of purpley mixture that we had, so we get this kind of dark bluish tint to it. Mix a little bit of our white, just very slowly mix the white. You don't want it to be too bright, right? A little bit of that blue. We can throw some of the snow over here. And you get this kind of bluish shadow. Again, not too much paint. You don't need a whole lot. You don't want a whole lot, right? Drop some of the blue down in here. Where do you think some of that shadowing might be? You can add just a little touch of that. And then once we go over it with a little bit of the white again, mix with that red down here, it'll hide the majority of all that big boldness, right? We'll go over like this, there we go. Just as the white mixes in, uh. Babe, kind of high guess look. Allison just asked a very good question. What's your question? She says, London, did you get dressed or are you still in your dressing gown and crocs? Ah. You tell her. You can see me. Uh, I feel like if I answer, I'll be lying. She's sort of dressed, yeah. You have pants on. I do have pants on. And you have your crocs on. So. I do have my crocs on. <laughs> All right, a little bit of that white pulled over that blue. This makes it not so crazy, right? It looks so good. We can even add some more of it. And this is the problem. Remember when we said don't do too much? This is what happens when the knife stays in Josh's hands for too long. We keep playing and playing and playing and playing. Oh yeah, a little bit of white with that blue. Give it a little bit of difference in color, right? Oh, you guys knew I was going to say that. Who knew that's what was going to come out of my mouth? I like that. It's very cool. Desiree it's very Denny neat. says probably won't be on long recovering from surgery, not feeling so well today. Oh, well, feel better. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for watching. We hope you feel better. Man, I just like to sit here and play with these things all day long. It is so much fun, right? You can add little things. You can change little colors. You can go with more straight white. Change up the color. As long as we have little differences, right? How many times I got to say that? How many times? Differences in color. Right? right. Differences in color. A little bit of red. Maybe along the edge. Bam. Just coming down. That's Tony, all you really got to do is make a mess. It's really in. Tony Vickers says, I have problems with the mist. Looks muddy. Okay, so you have too much paint then. That's why when we come down here, we're barely, we barely, that's why I'm smushing my knife onto it. Right? If I had the roll and left a whole big chunk of paint like we have up here, then it's going to get really muddy when you go to tap it. You want to be, you know, your knife has to be empty as you're coming down the side so you don't drop too much paint. So then when you come in with your fog like this, you won't have too much on there, right? I'm always trying to stress the, the, the small amount of paint that you need. Remember over here, I don't even want to go to the edge. I want to have some of this, kind of like a vignette sort of. But you don't even want... You know, you don't want to do too much. You don't want to have too much thick paint in the wrong place, right? So you had to, you know, you got to judge, you know, how the thick, I like getting thicker as we come towards us. So, you know, the more that we get closer, the more mud that we're, you know, kind of almost bound to make. Let's see. But yeah, you got to have less paint down here. It's got to be very thin. All right, now we're going to come into our darker pile that we made, right, that we didn't mix with the white. And we're going to make another mountain. Maybe it lives over here. Oh, it sure does now, babe. There she lives. I like having these mountains all jaggedy looking, like these rounded edges. Right, just by pulling in, pulling away, spreading that paint, right? Now, I don't want to leave too much of this fog. That's what I see a lot of times when you have these double mountains. That you leave too much it too much of the foggy area in there. All right, I want to save some of that sunset. So we're gonna have our little bit of yellow back in here, save some of that lighter color. But you don't want to save too much of it. Even with this one, we can come in on this side. We're gonna have some trees over here, so don't worry about that. It's a nice little slow, sloping, gentle little hill. And again, see how we're down here, and I've got basically nothing on my knife. There's nothing there. See what I mean? 
I'm just smushing in whatever the, the littlest bits that it wants to take. Scrape up from over here, smush it. Right? Really be rough with it. And that way you don't have too much paint. If you have a big glob right here, it's gonna really grow on us, right? You gotta almost have nothing on your knife. And then it won't grow too far. And you can see, we didn't leave too much of that area back there that's visible. We may even chuck a tree somewhere eventually. But by the time we think about it, when we get down that far, because we literally are making it up, right, babe? Mm-hmm. I do love doing like double mountain scenes. And again, I don't want to push it too hard over to the side. I want it to be kind of, you know, light on the edges. A little vignette-ish. Non-finished. There we go. Just pulling it down, right? Light amount of pressure. And you can see as we get down here, because we don't have so much paint, it's already creating the fog for us. We don't even have to do anything. And in the places where it's thicker, it's going to show up darker. It's going to grow longer. And you'll have these little differences in color. Yeah, differences in color. Yeah, that's what it was. I like that. How we can even go to the edge. And it's just like French fish. You know what? Bring to the shipping label. Yay, shipping label. I'm going to make this side over here a little proud softer. Of there we go. A little softer. Maybe they connect. Get this little bit of fog in there. Right? Oh, oh, I just look back. It looks fantastic. This side over here. Again, along the edge, I'm trying to pull the paint from the edge back and shape our little mountain the way that we want it to look. Again, very little amount of pressure. Very little. Nothing crazy, man. Nothing crazy. Okay, let's make this uh, this little light, uh, the darker kind of blue color that we had for those shadows back there. I'll make it a little bit lighter over here. Add a little bit of white, and then we'll just kind of throw in where we think it may live and build our mountain, right? And very lightly, and if you hear the knife, there's no paint on it, right? So I'm just dropping the smallest little bits there's not a lot of paint to begin with on this knife. We're just kind of smooshing it in. It's a very light touch. It's something you have to practice. So practice it on a, on a piece of cardboard or on a canvas that you've already used and just get the, the paint to break like that. You need to just, you gotta practice. You gotta feel it. It's a total feel thing. Here we go. Allison wrote, reckon I use way too much paint. Probably. I try to use, you know, especially when we do the black canvases, like this new one that we have coming out. You guys have been asking me to do a tutorial for this for like, you know, since we did the seventh and Carson thing. And uh, I finally did it last night. So it's coming out on Wednesday. Hope you tune in. There we go. We're going to mix a little bit of the brown and white together and just drop a couple stones in here, right? Like not all of it's always going to be covered in snow. Some of it is going to be exposed, and where those rocks are exposed, it gets warm, and the snow won't stick on top of those. So they'll have these exposed rocks. There's a little bit in here, just over that shadow, and that way when we cast some snow onto it, it's going to look fabulous. There we go. Just little random bits of rocks, right? Maybe over here in the corner, we'll mix in a little bit darker brown, so we'll change the color. And it'll have this darker shade because we're more in the shadow. It's in my mind, right? In my ridiculous mind. Okay, let's take a little bit more of that red. I like that reddish tint to the snow. But not too much red because it is a powerful uh, little color. There we go. Look at this. Right? You just kind of shape it in your mind. You're like, okay, it comes down, then it drops down. Comes over here, maybe it's a straight drop. And maybe on this side, we'll throw a little bit of snow on top of that rock as it slides down the hill, right? Make up little stories for it. It helps. It helps you kind of create, you know, what the mountain looks like. A little bit more red, a little bit more white, because we never make enough. Don't ask me why. Nice little snowy scene. There we go. We don't want that much paint on the knife, Josh. Come on. Little bits, little bits, right? Drag it down through here. Because we don't overmix it, you'll get these little reds and whites in have different great, areas. Have a great day, Desiree. Desiree leaving? Yeah. Bye, Desiree. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging with us. 
as we hang, right? There we go. Maybe a little bit more white down here. And we never know how far we're gonna go, right? You can always fog up if you if you miss the section or you know you don't like the way it looks, you can make your fog a little bit higher in some areas and different areas and blah 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 blah. Barbara Durbin is watching. Welcome, Barbara. Babs. Welcome, Babs. <laughs> Alright, there we go. I think that looks good enough. Okay, again, now that we don't have so much paint down here, right? I don't want to do this up here where it's very thick, nasty, right? You'd be creating way too much mud up there. So I'm going to come down here, and again, this is why we don't really wash the brushes. You get all these colors mixed together, very small amounts though, right? We don't have any big, thick globs on the brush. Just very small amounts. Because we're smushing it, we're using small, 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 small amounts of paint. If you guys haven't figured that out about me yet, Right? You should see how much paint we have left over on the palette at the end of the day. That'll tell you the small, minimal amount of paint that we're using in certain areas. And then when we get to our big forefront trees, then we're really using a lot of thick paint. So be mindful, right? Be mindful. Mindful. There we go. All right, we're gonna, we probably didn't even do this on this one because we're talking too much and we forgot. Just very light amount of swipes. Just so, like I didn't even get any paint on the brush. I barely even touched it, right? There, like if you drop something in an expensive store, I barely even touched it. Like it's, it's it was gonna fall anyway. So, such small amount of pressure. There's like maybe two little specks of blue on the end of this brush right here. Literally it. The more and more you mix it, the more it'll blend with that liquid white, right? And it'll change color and it'll you know, we start to see our land come towards us. Yes. Yes. What's your favorite pie, though, is the question. Because London and I argue about this all the time. We don't really. We don't really argue. But don't tell them that. Okay. London and I argue about this all the time. Which pie is better? I'm, I, we'll see. Actually, you guys should guess my favorite pie. Right? American boy. I probably just gave it away. But <laughs> you guys should guess my favorite pie. And London's favorite pie. Here we go. And in the meantime, while you're guessing pies, I'm going to mix up all of this dark color paint, the blue, the dark, the brown, everything. Mix it up because we're going to use it. We don't need to throw it away. Coconut. Coconut pie? Never. Well, I don't like uh, I don't really like coconut, really. So whoever said that is wrong. <laughs> okay. We mix up a whole big bunch of dark, right? We just picked from our three dark colors again. You can even throw in some of the sap green into there, just so it's all this nice, dark, nasty color. And you can see we've made a, a fair amount of it, right? A big, thick pile of it. We'll come in with our dark that never, even though it's clean, it never, ever has been white again. Because <laughs> this is the one we make our trees with all the time. So we'll go into that dark, right? This is a size 10, I think, or 8. I can't even remember. Joe Santos says cherry and apple for me. John Krasniak says Josh Apple London Pecan. Ooh, Josh Apple and Pecan. Pecan. London is another pea pie. Another but pea it's not, pie? Yeah, it starts with pea. Urine pie. No, not urine Yum. pie. Yum. Okay, now we didn't load it up too thick, okay? Because I don't want the trees back here to be very super textured, right? Again, we're going to start from the side. I don't want to go over, you know, too far to the edge, so we're going to hit that with our fog when we come back. And as long as we can pop a couple trees up, cover some of that area back there, it helps push it back, right? Pushes it into the distance. A little bit more paint. I want to know when everyone starts to put up their Christmas lights. I'm sure most people have already had them up. We're just lazy. I thought that was a rule, though. <sighs> I thought there was like a after. rule though. Like if you do it before Thanksgiving, Santa kills an elf or something. Kills an elf. Oh, that's funny. Kicks a reindeer or something. Right. Okay, now you can see some of our trees are about two and a half, three lengths. Some of them are about one to two, right? All different heights, but you don't need them to be humongous and you don't want them to be too small back there. Let's pick a brush, Josh. Pick a brush. All right, let's use this brush. Okay, come in with the two inch brush or your one inch brush, whatever you're more comfortable with, right? And we're gonna go all, almost all the way to the top. 
Uh, just leaving the tip tops, and again, this is why we did it over here, so you can just kind of fog it up over to the side. Fog it up. All right, almost to the tops of the trees, though, because we plan on putting something else in between. All right, mix up all that fog. You get these cool little floating trees way back in the distance. All right, if you want to put something underneath them, or you can just start fresh right here at the bottom of all that fog and make something tall enough to fit over, which may be what we're going to do. Maybe not. Maybe. See, that makes sense. Probably. What? John Krasniak says we usually do Christmas decorations off the Thanksgiving dinner. That would be nice. Being British, that's clearly not a tradition for me. <laughs> nah, Thanksgiving dinner. All right, let's get a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. We only put the smallest little brown of, uh, smallest little brown of brown, the smallest bit of brown on our uh, palette today. On some of these taller trees, I just want to touch and add like a little bit of trunk. Just a little difference in what, guys? Color! Uh, there we go. Different heights, different thicknesses, different places, all over the place. You guys might not even be able to see it, but I can sure see it. I right? don't want to have them too crazily thick or anything. And we don't need every single one to have a bit either. Okay, you know, flatten them down by pushing with a little bit of pressure. Just like that. You can see we've even left some drag marks down here, right? We can mix them up. You can tap at them. You can do all sorts of things until you make them nice and foggy. Again, we don't want to see the whole bit of trunk or anything, right? All this is going to be covered anyway, so just don't go down too far. Because then that implies that now our, our horizon is down here when you might have wanted it a little bit higher. Don't go too crazy, right? There we go. All right, let's throw a big old cabin back in there. This beautiful sky, I love it. Oh, so nice. Okay, we can use the same color to make our cabin. All right, because all we're really doing is just making the shape. So initially, why don't we start out and just, and there's nothing really here, right? There's not much paint there. It really isn't because we kind of fogged it all up, right? So we're just gonna scrape down, leaving the smallest impression of, you know, our building. Actually, I don't even like that right there. Let's move it a little bit over. We'll go like this, we're gonna pull it down that way, we're gonna go like that, pull it down that way, move our, our uh, roof, come down over here, put a big old tree, got it. Okay, here we go, it's fun to do that. Now I, I can't see where I did it initially. Okay, we're gonna pull down just with some straight black or that same color we made the mountains out of, right? About one and a half times on the right. One and a half times the length of your knife. Okay, really smush it in. Pushing really hard. We, can even, we might even have enough to do, oh, just a little bit, I guess. Didn't have enough. Okay, really smush it down in there. We're gonna do about two lengths of the knife on the left side. All right, so from the tip, we got one, come over, two, this one's about one and a half. So one side is a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit further away, right? Now make our line nice and straight, bam, bam, bam. And you can come down as far as you want. You really can, because you can really blend it out, turn it into shadows of your snow. Right over here, we're gonna come at this angle. Babe, Allison didn't want to bring this up during the live, but I think it's important. What's up? Um, apparently there's some issue with whether or not people are allowed to copy your tutorials. People are allowed to what? Copy your tutorials. Yeah, that's why I do them, so everyone can copy them. Of course. I say some, you know, some of the times yours might not look like mine, because you might go a different direction, or... You know, but I can immediately tell, like when Tanya posted today, I could immediately tell that was one of my paintings that she did, and it was probably this one that's sitting right over here. That's It's one that I really don't like, but the way that her mountains were and her little cliff in the front, I was like, that's the one that she did. And I can immediately tell, and it makes London and Mine's day when somebody does one of our, oh, one of ours, one of my paintings. <laughs> one of ours, yeah, I don't paint. <laughs> Well, but people... if you want to go on my uh, TikTok and copy one of my makeup looks, you're more than welcome. Right. <laughs> people want you to paint, babe. No. <laughs> people would not tune in. Okay. A little bit of white with the littlest touch of red. It's that same snow we've been using for the mountains and stuff, right? Just so it's not pure white. 
pull it down with our knife. And then we can start to shape it. We can throw shingles on it. And every time you touch this dark, it's gonna mix a little bit, which is fine, because we're on the dark side of the cabin. We don't need it to be super bright. Right? We can create the, the pitch, the sides, everything of our roof, just like that. Nice and easy. And if you wanted shingles on yours, you can even take a little bit of the dark and tap them in. All right? Make sure they're at the right angle, though. There we go. You just make it nice and muddy and messy and heavy, right? Or you can flatten them back out, however you want yours to look. we got to come up a little bit higher with our uh, perspective of our roof here. There we go. And this is why we scrape off all that stuff from back here, right? You don't want to be trying to mix all that and try to throw your thick paint over the top of it. It's no fun, trust me. Trust me, it's no fun. All right, now we need to make up some wood for this cabin, right? We can even take, that's too much. Bring some of that down. Right? Just because then we have that dark underneath there, we can mix it a few times and make it go away. Make it look how we want it to look. <clears throat> and again, guys, don't forget, if you like these videos, share them, obviously. Support my Etsy store. The more canvases you guys make, the more videos I can, you know, the more canvases... <laughs> Sorry, the more canvases you guys buy, or the more products, the more purchases you make, right? The more canvases I can get and keep bringing you free videos. Plus, my daughter, Bailey, told me that with every canvas bought in December, someone will get, you know, the, the purchaser will get a bracelet made by my daughter herself. And these bracelets are really lucky, you guys. She wanted me to tell you that. They really are, too. They are lucky. So, with every canvas bought, you'll get a, uh, a cute little bracelet for my daughter, right? How sweet. She's a little entrepreneur. There we go. We're just literally t scooping it up a fair amount and pulling it straight down, kind of mushing it in, right? You want to have these little differences, these breaks, but you want your lines to be straight, okay? And the more and more you go over it, the more it's going to mix and end up looking, you know, different than how you really want it. So don't get too crazy, okay? Now we're gonna take a little bit more of that brown, mix it in so it's darker, maybe a little bit of the mountainish mixture, that dark shadowy color. And then we're gonna come over here, same thing, pulling it down, but you want them to be a different color than what's on the front. And that way it will look like this is in the light, that's in the shadow, and you have this 3D cabin. Okay, drag it down. Remember, you can pull it down and then blend it out. If you don't pull it down far enough, then uh, your cabin will be really short. I've had this happen to me. I have really short little cabins, like little teeny ones. All right, now we're going to go. You have to imagine we're in this V right here, right? To make our building look 3D, we have to have a corner that has to be deeper than the other bits, right? So we're going to start up here. We're going to pull out to the side. We're going to work down at an angle until we get down to the lowest bit of our cabin down here, okay? You guys see that? It's like that. A little bit of an angle, right? And that way, Aww. we're going to go from this side, starting back here, pulling up, and then working our way down to the front. Bam, 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 just like that. Big Pike's here. Oh, Pike's here. What's up, dude? We watch your uh, TikTok lives all the time. My husband only watches it because it's the only time someone else will reference my name in a popular video. Yeah. There we go. Gotta have your perspective right, right? It's gotta come down to a point. Looks like we have a hole in our cabin over here, but it's okay. We'll stick a bush over it or something. We'll do some sort of something. All right, let's throw our door off to this side this time. And for a cabin this size, we can use the full bit of a knife to make our door, right? And then maybe we'll use the small side of the knife and make a little window over here. Just scratch it out. That's why we put that black back there. Now it looks like this abandoned, empty building. A little bit of liquid white on our knife, right? Come down like this. Doesn't even have to be the same. You don't have to go down the same. They don't have to mirror image each other. You just want that little bit of difference in color, right? So when someone looks, they will see maybe it's a little sheen on the. Maybe this guy, you know, he put too much gloss on his window. Let's take a little bit of the uh, titanium white, mix it with that liquid white so it becomes nice and thin, and then it will stick easier, right? If we pull down just a little bit, man, we've got a couple little icicles. 
or this big bit of snow that's collected on top of his window. All right. Again, it doesn't even have to look perfect or anything. Come this guy in, he's bugging me. You want to add a little path, right? Uh, why not? Take a little bit of that dark and just throw it out to the side. Remember, you're never going to see the whole path and it's going to get longer as it gets down to the edge, right? I like having mine just a little bit softer than a palette knife. Not, not fully kind of blended out, but not real textured either. And that'll allow us to put some snow or some kind of something onto it. And if this is little line is just too straight for us, just blend it in with that purplish color. Right? Make it go away. Make it go away. Sometimes we forget we've got to pull the other side too. There we go. <clears throat> and because we have all that fog back there, maybe there's a dip. Maybe there's a canyon in between. Maybe something's happening back here. There's distance in between the cabin and the forest in the back, right? That's why we do these things. I try to tell you the things that the pros, like Pike, don't want you to know, right? Pike's a pro. He doesn't want you to know these things. But I'm telling you the secrets, like that magician told all the secrets, and then somebody killed him, I think. <laughs> At least they should have. <laughs> Giving away all the damn secrets. There we go. Little fence, just push it in. It's really simple, guys. Really, it's not difficult. Gonna pull them out both ways. Right, get this cool little fence back there. Grab a little bit of liquid white. Mix it in with our, uh, we need another little pile of brown and white. That one's too dark over there. All right, little brown, little white. Scoop up the littlest bit. Come back. We don't, we're not trying to cover the shadow now, right? We just want to go along the side of it. Don't try to cover the whole thing. Get a little half and half. And it doesn't even have to cover the entire section of shadow. They don't have to connect. They don't have to look similar. They could look all raggedy and nasty like old fence posts do. And depending on how you pull it out, depends on the shape of your fence, right? All right, what else can we do to this little, this little painting, babe? Throw a little bit of dark right underneath the eave. Just like that. You gotta be careful, though. You gotta be careful. I like how it just separates it just a little bit. Just a little touch. Pike says not as much as much of a pro as you. Oh, please. Not with this style. You are the master, brother. Well, thank you. Pike does really cool, like, witchy art. Like, cool designs. Where they, they come from probably the devil himself, Pike. The gives devil. you your, your designs. The devil. The devil. Alright, now because we already have all these shadows, right, we don't need a whole lot of white in our snow. Literally just mushing it in, just like we do with the clouds, and then we're just going to make it soft. Right? Just make it soft. Doesn't have to connect to anything. Again, doesn't have to be super thick. Just make it a little bit softer. Gotta make it soft, guys. Soft. My path kind of got lost in this guy, so we'll throw him out here a little bit. Maybe there's a road that connects down here. Who knows? We're not, we're not there yet, so we don't know. I'm going to mix this in with that path, that like dark shadowy color. And again, just make a mess, right? That's, that's Josh's way of painting. We make a mess, show you how to make it look neat. That's all nature really is, is it just a gross mess. Look, I love how these little bits kind of look like they've, you know, kind of piled up a little bit higher than the rest. It's lovely. And again, it's just from the randomness, right? Like, oh, Josh makes these paint I die. I want to paint like you, right? Well, just make a mess then. Just make just, a mess then. Yeah, just, just go at it. Tom was asking me the other day, uh, or last night, oh, what do you think I should do with this? I'm like, just, just do it. Just go do it. Do it. If you don't like what it looks like, you can always change it, right? Yes. Pike <laughs> wrote, I, do, I don't work with the devil, Josh. The only devil <laughs> I know is your wife. Oh, she's a devil with a red dress on. How'd that song go? Oddly. She's a devil with a red fleece sweater on. Are you wearing my sweater? No. I should have worn my grumpy sweater today. I'm not grumpy, though. There we go. All right, now we can go a million places from here, right? Like, what, what could we do? 
What could we do is the question. I probably want to have something. You can see this is why we left this bare area here. Because I don't want to put a big tree over the top of the mountain and all that. But we could slip one down in here. That would be nice. That would be nice. Uh, let's do that real quick. But not like a big thick evergreen tree. Like a little thin little sticky tree. Right, very thin, and then we push harder as we come down, so the trunk grows a little bit. All right, you can take the bottom, pull it out however which way you want, and depending on how tall you pull it, if you pull it up back here, it's gonna look like it's back behind the house, right? Depending on where we leave the, the uh, base, the trunk of the tree. And that's your perspective, right? That's what we talk about. All about how it looks like it may look like the coolest tree ever but if it looks like it's floating or you know out of place then it's gonna look strange oh this tree's so small I gotta use this little micro liner brush right to make these little small little trunks it's even too damn big I'm gonna make the tree trunk bigger just to support all these little trunks there we go all my little branches branch my man Right, this is why we leave all this foggy area. If you were to try to do this over the top of all that thick paint back here, it would be more difficult. You're not going to be able to drag out these real thin little branches over all that thick stuff. Right, nice little chunky little guy right here. Just be random with your branches too. They don't all even have to make sense. Right? Some poke out this way, the other way. This guy maybe goes down. Maybe a piece of them goes up or goes off to the side. Totally up to you. And that's what's going to make yours look really neat, is the differences versus mine or someone else's. Let's take a little bit of liquid white. Have a nice feeder on your pond. I have too much. There we go. Don't want to have too much dark back there, but we don't want to have too much white either. We do need to have one side that's a little bit lighter color. On our tree. There we go. Take some of that thicker dark up here. Woo! Almost made a little happy little accident, guys. There we go. Much easier with this. My old shaky hands. I'm just making one side of the tree dark, one side of the tree light. All right, so you have a little bit of difference. Gives it that little bit of light, that implied light over there. Yeah, I like it. I like it. What'd you say about a pond now? You should put an ice skater on your pond. An ice skater? Mm. I don't know about that. But we are going to add a shed ton more details. So you guys know how I love my upward turned evergreen trees. So let's add one or two. Let's add one over here. All right, just like that, giving us a straight line down. You can tell we're coming down the, the path, turning our brush to the side, and pushing up, right? That's all we're doing. But we're just using the just a corner, right? You can even skip down a bit. Make them all crazy. They don't all have to connect. Right? We're just rotating like this. Just touching in different places, giving us our little tree as it grows down, right? We don't have to connect it. You can, you can put little branches wherever you want. There we go, nice and thick. Thick old guy. I pull him down further than I want to because I'm gonna come up at least one branch and pull that out with my one inch brush. Pike's leaving, say bye. Bye, Pike. Thanks for tuning, tuning in. There we go, little smaller guy back here. Tony Vickers says, pond with bench in front. Everybody oh, wants a pond. No damn pond. I don't know what we're going to do. If, if a pond ends up growing there, then that's what the pond's going to do. All right, let's see. Pull out our little trees. Again, down here. I pulled out that whole bottom branch, right? Don't need all that branch. Making a little hill. Maybe our, maybe our path comes down. Maybe there's a bit of something. Maybe we need another tree off the side over here. It's looking a little bare. A little bit bare, right? I gotta fill her in. Fill her in, fill her in. 
and we can do that with one of these big old suckers like this. Again, the closer we want it to us, the thicker it needs to be, the further it needs to come down, right? And now we can decide what we're gonna do. Now that I have my edges filled in, what are we gonna do? We can put another big one over here, kind of take out half of that. That'll look nice, so what's gonna go back there then? I'm gonna have something, maybe something, who knows? Who knows, guys? I sure don't know. Let's take a step back and look at it. What's it look like over here on the camera? Man, that looks really good. <whistles> All right, what does the audience think? They say pond. There's really, I mean, I could put a pond like here. It looks like that could be a pond, but it's almost too much water. I need That's something a like a drop down. Because I like to sit very low in my paintings, right? It's like we're sitting down here. We have all this stuff, right? You see the whole tops of the trees. So, you know, for a pond, for me, it would have to be very low to the ground. So maybe we put a couple boulders in here and drop us down a section. Yeah, and we can come down over there. I like that. Let's try that. But let's do them differently than we normally do. All right, let's take a little bit of our dark color and our filbert brush, and let's make sort of, you know, what we think these boulders might look like. And they go down. Remember, we're going to be pulling it off down here, so don't worry about that. Different shapes. They're not all the same. They're not all circular. And let's try our bigger one over here. A little bit of light area in between them. Let's see what they look like. Put something back over there. Maybe we'll have some steps that come down, and then we'll be down a little, a lower level. Kind of pull this out, just very straight across though, right? Don't want to have it too crazy, and we want to leave a little section there. There we go, bing, bing, boom. Try not to cover all of our purples and stuff, right? It looks like a, almost like a... Just the dark pink for water. Oh, Kay Campbell's back. Oh, hey, Kay. Hey, Coot. <laughs> All right, let's take... And if we're going to try to do it a different way versus just using the palette knife, then let's do it a different way. John Krasniak says, how about a stream? Allison says, yes, a stream would be nice. Streamish. This is how I think they speak, I don't... Yeah, right, that's too dark. Left too much brown. So again, I'm kind of using the the filbert brush like a palette knife, and just kind of dumping on a little bit of that darker brown color. And then let's see what just straight white looks like if we start to mix that in as one of these rocks, a little gray, very gray little rock, light gray color. Not too bad. Not too bad. Try to show you guys little different ways to do stuff, right? There we go. A little bit of white on top. Looks better that way. Well, we want to have just the littlest touch of dark around it as well. Right? It's going to shape our rock. There we go. Look like this nice little boulder. Yeah. How does that look? Doesn't look too bad? Looks spectacular. Like Doesn't always. Too bad. There we go. Don't need it to be too super crazy. And why not? We'll do one over here. With the palette knife, we can do that, right? A little bit of light color up there, over here. It just depends on how comfortable you are, right? I'm super comfortable with the palette knife. It's faster for me. You get these cooler looks, right? This is more of a smooth kind of rock. This is more of a jaggedy kind of rock. And then for our last one, do we have any more of this white and red paint left? Let's see, oh, we do, just enough. There we go, a couple little different bits, right? Different little things. Put a little touch of white on top of this guy. Make our little mini mountains, right? That's all we're really doing. It's just making a little teeny little mini mountain. Bruce says, have a wood pile, chopping stump. Ooh, I did, I, I did a chopping stump in that other one. We could do one right here. It's simple. Simple enough. I'm gonna 
grab our little deal. We need my yardstick for this one. Yardstick for this one. Okay, we want our, we don't want, never gonna see the whole top of the chopping block, right? So we want a very, very flat oval. Very flat. Just like that. All right, then we can bring our tree down. Blah, blah, blah. Shape it however we wanna shape it. Fill it in. Bing, bing, boom. Ba, 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 ba. Just like that. Got a little tree stomping block right there. Okay, very, very lightly pull out that way, and then the rest we're going to pull this way. Trying to leave that little area of light in between. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Now we can kind of color that. Let's see. What are we going to use? Maybe this fan brush, if it'll dump on enough dark color. Just trying to make the one side a little bit darker. You gotta use what you gotta use, right? Use what you can. Especially when you get a crazy request from a fan that's like, oh, do, uh, do a chopping block. When you didn't even plan on it, right? Okay, let's do this. Pop, 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 pop. Again, I'm only letting half the tree really shine. The other half is in the shadow. We do need a little bit of white on top, though, that's for sure. Smallest, teeniest, little bit of white, but leave an area of dark behind it. Oh, come on, Josh. There we go. Nail it. You can land this puppy. Land this puppy. There we go. A little bit of white, a little bit of dark around, right? So you have the teeniest little bit of roundness on the top. And there we go. Chopping block. He said they got a chopping block. Chopping block. You're on the chopping block. There we go. The more you pull it out, the more little shadows you can give it. Take the littlest bit of that dark. That's even way too much, Josh. Knock some of that off. Right, there we go. The more and more you push with that liquid white on there, the more, you know, cool little things you're gonna get to happen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. People are like, oh, I like painting with liquid clear. I'm like, yeah, but why? Like, the white turns, you know, all these different colors into such beautiful little things. Why would you just use the clear? Straight across on this snow over here, right? Just a little bit. We don't need to even paint a whole lot of snow. The whole place is covered in snow, right? We've got a snowy roof. We're going to have snowy trees. We have snowy everything. Again, just kind of dropping it on like we would on a mountain, and then we're going to blend it out. Don't worry about that. All right, do it down here, too. Pull it out, and then we're going to it'll end up with like a little pathway down here. Maybe we'll have that pond that you guys are all crowing for. Crow for a pond. No? <laughs> no, 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 I guess. There we go. Remember, the more and more you mix in, the more it's gonna start to change and kind of mix in with those colors. It's like this really, like a dark purple oval right here. It's strange. I love these little rocks though. What are we gonna put in the front? Actually, we're gonna end up losing this tree or this little tree stump. Crocodiles. When we do our big tree that comes down over here. You gonna put crocodiles down in the front? <laughs> I don't know. Crocodiles? It sounded good in my head. Yeah, right. Let's do another little bit of rocks in here, but we're just going to use the knife de palette. Okay, a little bit, another little section of stones that might sit in front of these other stones. It just helps bring us down a little bit, right? You never have just one pile of rocks. You gotta have rocks on top of rocks on top of rocks. Ask my mom. That's what the cabin looks like. Rocks on top of rocks on top of rocks. And again, it just gives us like another inch down. And then we get time to decide what the hell we're going to do. What are we going to paint, Josh? What are we going to put in there? All right, I don't want to pull all the way down from the top because they're going to grow much too large. All right, there's too much paint with that palette knife up there, so don't pull down too crazily. There we go. Pull this sucker out over here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, isn't that just lovely, you guys? Isn't that just fantastic? It is. Fantastic. Okay, a little bit more. We're gonna come in just very lightly, just on the one side of these guys, leaving some side in the shadow. Gotta have shadows. Gotta do it. Gotta have them. And leave a disconnect in between the thick paints, right? We don't wanna have this thick paint on top of that thick paint and vice versa. It's almost like the same when we do with our mountains. You make it a little bit, a little bit softer down there. And you don't want to come up too crazy. What was that noise, babe? 
Apparently I set an alarm. It must have been from when I was coming to see you on Halloween. Because it says check text message for missing items. Oh, <laughs> when we painted it uh, APOT then. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, because I forgot loads of stuff. I was nervous that day. I was nervous. But we have another event coming up on uh, the 17th, 16th. 16th? 16th. My Christmas party is the 17th. Yeah. So we'll have another live painting event on the 16th. And uh, we're going to be doing it at some remote location again. It should be really cool. I really like how we didn't cover this up with a bush. I might try to just save, maybe go in between. Because <laughs> I really like that too. That was a good idea. Good idea, person, whoever you are. Kay mm. Campbell says, Josh, I'm going to message you this beautiful Northern Lights picture taken in Labrador where I live. Oh, cool. Yeah, definitely. People love the Northern Lights. Like, yeah. I like making colorful clouds versus Northern Lights. But, you know, that's just me. Maybe I'll have to do a Northern Lights painting. I did sell... A pair of socks to Alaska, guys. I finally got into Alaska. You know how long I've been trying to sell something to Alaska? Two years. Yeah, well, since October of, yeah, more than two years, yeah. Been dying to sell something to Alaska. All right, now let's throw a little bit of our snow right at the bottom of these guys, right? Our little white snow. Maybe we'll wrap around the side. You guys can see where I'm coming here. Can you see? I can see clearly now. I don't know what I'm talking about. I can see Carol okay. now. Lorraine has gone. Lorraine. That's funny. There we go. Pulling it down at this kind of, this little exaggerated angle, right? Don't want to have too many straight lines from our palette knife where we dropped it on. And we don't want to blend it all out so much that we can't, see any differences in it, right? You gotta have differences. This is a little bit thick as I look back. Right? Gotta have differences. A little bit of snow piled up on these old rocks out in front of dude's house. Right? And again, if we can make these like that, you see what I mean? If you can connect your your little lay, your land lays, your landlines, your swipes, then you know you're on the right path, right? You know you're not going too steep you're not going too straight, if everything can end up connecting, if I went over here, it would connect with this. If I went back there, everything's got to connect. Just like in real life. Otherwise, it doesn't look right. It looks weird. Right? Now, we can tell. Maybe we'll bring a little bit of that white through there, but I don't want to lose that pink color. Right? That's our little path. It doesn't have to be covered in snow. It could be pink just like that. It's beautiful. Okay, now we're down to the bottom. What are we going to put down here? We could put water. We could put another bush. We put a tree on this side. I don't really want to do water, actually. Because if we put another taller tree to come down further over here, and we could have a path coming through, we could put a fence up. We could do a No, I don't want to do a fence off that side. But there's lots of different things that we could do. But before we get too far ahead, right? You're like, Josh isn't going to highlight those trees? Yeah, we are. A little bit of uh, sap green and the liquid white to make it nice and wet, right? And we're gonna come back, gonna add the little tips of our trees, and then just with the corner, very, very lightly touching as we come down, right? You don't wanna cover all the shadows, and you don't need to go real crazy as it gets down to the bottom. Uh, let's get some new paint on here. Wipe it off, you don't even need to clean it. Right? Wipe it off, a little bit more liquid white, back into that green. Don't want to change the color too much. If you put too much liquid white, it's going to go really bright green. All right, come back in, skip down, skipping over some of our, our bits of shadow, right? We don't have to cover everything, guys. You really don't. It's beautiful, just like that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, titanium white with the liquid white. And you can see, since we didn't wash the brush, we get this little tinge of green to it, right? So it's not pure white. I just want a little bit, because now we're going to come back in and just highlight little bits of that green with this lighter color. Just like that. These different colors.
colors, differences, different changes, different snow, different shadows, different everything. And they don't even all have to look the same. This guy looks like he needs more green. Compared to the other guy from back here, this guy looks like he's missing some greenery. Again, we don't want to be too full. Don't want to cover too much. Look at that. That's so much better. Just with that couple extra branches and this one right here. I love painting, you guys. I love what we can do when we put our little minds to it, right? It's fantastic. This one is fantastic. You guys are fantastic. London's fantastic. Red Bull is fantastic. Mm. Man, that's good. All right. No one has anything to say? I like our, all of your uh, suggestions this week, guys. What are we going to no, do down here, though? everyone's quiet. What is he going to do? Everyone's like, oh, what is he going to do? It's birds. What is he going to do with this now? I'm so into it. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, a little bit of, yes, just a touch of uh, trunk right there. You can even throw just a littlest bit. It's a little bit of stick. All right, we should have done it before. And then just very lightly go over it so you can't see the whole trunk. Right? You see a little bit of it down in there. Because you're never going to see the entire bit of anything. You never see the entire sky. You never see the entire mountain. Never see the entire cabin, right? Because I can't see the back or this side. Never see the entire tree, the rocks, the stump, anything. Anything. Okay, let's do... We need to put uh, limbs on this guy, and then we could do one more. Maybe he comes down on an angle. Maybe not so much of an angle. Remember the tip top come down in between there. Right? Taking out some of that tree instead of the stump, because I love the stump. And then we're going to come down here. Okay, let's do that. Gotta plan it out in our minds. On my brand new palette. I hate getting paint on a brand new palette. Sometimes you gotta do it, right, babe? Yes, babe. What uh, What do we have planned later, babe? I was gonna take a nap. Oh, you're gonna take a nap. You take a nap upstairs and I'll play Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. After I list this painting for sale and do all of my marketing and all that stuff. Okay. By the way, you should know. Oh, Josh does have an Amazon shop. If you do visit oh, the Amazon true. shop and you do buy things, it is an affiliate link. Therefore, he does make a fraction of pennies from the items that you purchase. So if you do not want to put any money in Josh's pocket, please do not shop there. Just go somewhere else. There we go. Had to save a little bit, right? Go here. Thanks for that, babe. You're welcome. Man, gotta push a little bit of it back behind everything, right? Covered a little bit of the cabin, covered a little bit of this, covered the branches from the tree. You can't just leave, you know, every, you can't see everything. You have to cover it. Is no one listening? No, I know you guys are listening. How about a pile of cut firewood by the fence? By which fence? Whose fence are we talking about? This fence? Maybe. A pile of cut firewood right there. Yeah. Mm. Bruce mm. Poinsett thinks your rock pile looks like a grave. Sweet. I like that. I could rock with that. All right, let's do... This guy might be down too far for my initial plan, so what are we going to do? Let me come down a bit too far. I don't want to really get rid of all that... Push them up here. Then we can throw our fence and stuff in there too. This looks like a grave. It did initially when I was first doing this one. It looked like a couple gravestones. I agree with that. There we go, right? Not covering all of our purple. Oh, now we have just two different kinds of purpley, purpley bits. If we add a little bit of the dark in there and get our implied pathway. That's perfect. That is perfect. And then we'll put just a couple little things right here, maybe a bush. We'll do one little bush over on this side. Put a fence over here, call it good. So let's give these trees some limbs, some limbs. The guy had to go out and cut all the limbs off these trees. He didn't have a saw big enough to just chop them down. He had to scale up, cut all the limbs off. Why doesn't Josh's tree have any limbs? That's why. 
Right? Again, we like to stay away from the thickness. Right? So you have to have a ton of paint thinner when you're going over your real thick areas in your brush. So go back, get more every time so you don't run into this real big mess. Right? So come out there, be very small. There we go. Remember, the further your branch comes out, the more thicker it needs to be over here. The more thicker. Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> the more thicker it needs to be over here. Paint with Ignorant Josh. That's the new channel. <laughs> make Square Planet. Yeah, Make a Square Planet with Ignorant Josh. You gotta have enough paint thinner if you want it to work. That's the dead honest truth. The less paint thinner you have, the more your bristles want to spread out. They want to start getting dry. And you don't want to have them too thick with paint. You just want them dry enough so they make these real sharp little edges. Nice skinny little things that you can work with, right? Very cool. It's very cool. Just remember, when you're in that thick area, you got to have a lot of paint thinner on your brush. you got to have it. Let's see, this one's going to come out straight down like that. This is that tree that you walk past and it like jabs you in the side. That's this damn branch. Oh. Damn guy. There we go. Let's give this other guy some and we'll be uh, just about done, actually. Nice and he's really skinny, so our branches over here have to be really skinny. Unless we kind of extend his length, his girth over here. There we go. That's better. Alright, now remember, pick areas that aren't so overloaded with that thick paint to put your branches in. You don't want to have them too nuts. Go over this real thick paint, and then it's not really going to play with you very nicely. What is that sound? Oh, it's you twisting in the chair. I swear that sounded like a fart. That would be funny. That would have been so funny. I was like, I look back like, babe. I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were live. Yeah, she, you're, so, you're so comfortable. You just let one rip. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely no weapon. It was like, Arr! This little teeny little squeaker. Nope. Nope, definitely not. Not for my beautiful wife. She does not fart ever. Okay, can we... Alright, we'll stop talking about it. Okay, we make a new topic. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone farts, babe. It's okay. Babe! Okay, we're not talking about this anymore. There we go. Damn, look at that. This big old thick branch over here goes off the end of the canvas. Off the side. The way it catches somebody's eyeball as they're walking past. Ah! And off the side of the canvas. Into your eye. Tonya says it looks very nice. Oh, thank you. Put another big old thick branch down here. Branch, my man. Hmm? Alright, these ones. Gotta get good at painting on the side of your canvas for these guys. Let me tell you. Again, thick. If they're if they if they stretch a long ways, or they're bigger, you know, down the, the front of the cabin, then they gotta be thick. There we go. Bam. Right in front, just pushes that cabin backwards. Feeds everything, feeds our eye to this little pathway down here around the bottom. Alright, let's highlight this sucker. We don't want to use this greenish white, that's for sure. Scrape some of that away, use it over here eventually. Use it on something. We got that, let's do this, and let's throw it with the crimson. A little bit of white, a little bit of crimson. Oh, there's blue snuck in there too. Let me get rid of that, there we go. Make it like these red woods, these pink woods. Since our, uh, Kay Campbell our says, are you referring pink. to liquid clear when you refer to thinner? 
No, uh, I use low odor mineral spirits, or I mean, you could use liquid clear, but it, liquid clear, it does thin down the paint, but it still leaves a very thick amount on your brush. You know what I mean? Oh, did I just touch that? I can't tell if I touched something. But uh, what I'm talking about is making, you can even see it's real uh, glossy right here because I took the low odor mineral spirits or paint thinner or baby oil or however you clean your brushes and put that in so it became very thin. For me, the, uh, the liquid clear, it's still a little too thick when I'm trying to mix it. I want it to be very, very, very thin. Let's see. to keep it on the side and trying to leave some of that dark in there too don't want to cover all the dark k campbell says like a half K -K. and half huh k campbell says kk oh kk <laughs> oh kk tanya vickers says looks really nice thank you tanya's pretty good she's done a few of mine and i've been like is that my painting same with uh, Raymond. Raymond did one of mine the other day. Oh, I just got rid of all the damn pink. Okay, see what you guys made me do. Didn't have enough dang paint to start with. That was the problem. There we go. And again, it's such a small amount of paint that it blends with that dark paint that's back there. And that's our little shadowy color, right? Now, I like every so often putting a little bit of that dark on the other side. It helps keep the tree very textured and you get this real bark feel to it you know what i mean and it helps it stay nice and uh nice and dark like that really dark bam, bam, bam. the higher we go the more uh highlight you're gonna see so don't worry about that I'll go over here bam, bam bam just pull to the side just very lightly until you don't have any more paint it starts to turn dark go back get some more and it doesn't have to be the same amount of brightness everywhere on your tree. So now you gotta have these differences in what? Color. Color. Here we go. Doesn't even have to be the same all the way up, right? A little bit darker here, a little bit lighter there. Who cares? It's no big deal. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. Oh, sorry. And where the people are. I want to paint. Want to see them painting. Okay, here we go. Stop embarrassing myself. All right, we need a little bit of snow down here. Over here. How long have we been painting for today? I haven't even been keeping track of time. One hour and 18 minutes, sir. 118. My lord, you guys are lucky. I don't like that. Push that out. This thing needs to be a bit further back. I can even take some of that shadow, pull it down that way very lightly, right? Just so we get a little bit of implied shadowness over here. Shadowness. There we go. <laughs> John Krasniak says, I rewound the stream, and no, you didn't touch the canvas where you thought oh, you might have. That was already there. <laughs> it's like a little, little bit of a branch. Mommy. We can even take just the littlest bit, put a little branch on him, a little highlight. It's like a bird's nest or something. A little birdie nest. A little bit of bird nest. Oh, thank you guys for watching today. You guys have been great. Why is there so, it's like it's about to drip off my thing. That's going to be too much paint. A little bit of white on the edge. Just like a little bit of sun glare. All right, boom, boom, boom. Sometimes you have to push harder. You're going to drop some of that white off. Go back. You just want it on the tip of the brush, really. And then when you run out, you got to go back and get more. And all we're really doing is highlighting these tops of the branches where we might see a little bit of shine from the sun or something. Right? Some little difference in color that we would see. Stick moved, babe. Oh, it no. moved. Oh no. Let's go over here. 
should put Christmas decorations up. What, today? Yeah. All right. We need a tree still. Nah. We're going to get rid of our tree last year. Tree me. Yeah. Our tree last year, all the lights didn't work on it anymore. <laughs> it was just becoming a pain. Took a dump. I didn't know we had a ceiling titty in this room. Yeah. There's ceiling titties all over the place around here. Very light amount of paint on these branches, guys. So thin. Uh, I don't think you were quite prepared for Kate Campbell's photos. Why? What do you mean? She sent a bunch? Look. What? Oh, nice. Those are cool. Those are cool. There we go. Sweet. You don't need to highlight every branch. They don't all have to look the same. Say it all the time. It's up to you guys to listen. Oh, I do say it. Bam, bam, bam. Just like so. Looks good. What are we going to do down here around the bottom? That was the question. That is the question. Allison is going to try this painting next week. Tony Vickers says, can't wait to paint this one. Awesome. John Krasniak says, the door of your cabin needs a handle or a knob if you haven't already done it. I may have missed it, or I can't tell. My old eyes. Uh, no, it was more of an abandoned, like the door got kicked off of its hinges almost. But we can add a door handle to it. Very simply. Watch this. Uh, which side would you open? The one by the window. Yeah, right. Do, door do, handle. Do, do. Door handle. Babe. Yeah. Where are the birds? They're not here yet. They're not here yet. Alright, we're not done we're not done yet. That's why they're not here. You've been live for one hour and twenty-two minutes. Awesome. Alright, let's get a little bit more of this. You guys know me, how I like my snows. Right, if we said we were gonna put something down around there, it's gotta be able to sit on something. So we're kinda mushing it on and just very lightly until we like the way that it looks. Mush. Kinda mushing it a little bit. Just until we like it. And then we'll add something else. Something else. Because you guys have been so cool today. Why don't we put... We could go over this side. It has to be really big, though. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I really don't know. What I can tell you, though, is I'm not getting any more white paint out of my easel. Uh, out of my box, so this is going to have to do. Let's see, we need a bit more We're kind of running across our path, maybe like this. Again, coming back and swiping it, right? This is when it's cool. You can watch your landscape kind of come to life and the, the snow will move. The more and more you push on it, the more the snow will kind of move around, and it'll be like you're watching it on video drift across the, uh, the landscape. That looks really neat. But that's how you get, you know, too crazy, too. You do too much. And uh, you're watching your, your snow move all over the place, and then you do one thing, and it's too much, and then, you know, you kind of messed your whole thing up. So, I like that, though. I like it. I did want to get a little bit of separation in between these deals. Maybe there's a bit of rock there. And I'm just kind of separating it with some grooves. Some dark lines that keep it separate from the other rocks. Make them look a little bit more 3D. Blend this dark line down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I like it. 
I like it a lot. Okay. Get rid of this. You guys want the birds? You're asking for the birds? But the birds! The birds! Where are the birds gonna sit? Question. Or fly. They don't sit anywhere. They fly me to the moon. So I can dance among the stars. Something about Jupiter and Mars. There we go. The birdies, got everything else. We're gonna put one more thing down here because I think it needs something. I don't know what, but it needs something. And I don't, I don't wanna do my fence because the fence will have to be really damn big. It just won't make any sense. You know what Bob used to do all the time? He put like a little, like a leaning fence post or something, you know, off over here. And then they wouldn't even connect. It'd just be like these messed up, funky, you know, twisting bits of old fence. And it looked way cool. All right, a little bit of browns. Come on this side. Just the littlest bit, though. Don't need a whole lot. Don't want to cover everything. There we go. What do you think about that? It's kind of funky without a piece in between. <laughs> don't we think? I don't. Why don't you put it so that it's fallen in the snow? Oh, like down? Yeah. Good idea, babe. Sometimes I have them. That piece is broken. Again, only really highlighting the top of it. And that's it. Yeah, babe. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, babe. Just like that, babe. I like it, babe. Take any little last bit of white that we have, and we can just give us a couple little bright areas. A couple brighter areas, and we blend out the rest. Got our little thing. I still think it needs something down in the corner down here. I really do. And we have the extra paint, and we have the time and the viewers, right? Why don't we get another brush dirty? Tap it into our little bush making brush down here. And then we'll just do like a little bit of a bush. Just down here. Nice little soft little guy. Right? Just right out in the foreground. Now we can take it. It doesn't have to fall off the end of the canvas, right? We can take it, put a little bit of land underneath, brings it into the foreground. And I have no more white paint to put underneath it so let's put this kind of greenish brownish paint because I don't want to go back into the box and this is sort of light colored like snow I guess sort of make it nice and flat right? but that little piece that just sticks out right in the front looks great all right let's wash that off real quick we'll highlight it and then we'll be done super easy today Little sunset, snowy, wintry little cabin. Beautiful. Right. Right, like Dean says. Right. Right. <laughs> skip shot. Okay, little, <laughs> little crimson, and we'll put it right on top. Actually, that might be too close to the color that we have as the background snow. So let's just get a little bit of white. The liquid white, right? Goes right over the top of these little guys, just so, so lightly. Don't want to have it be too thick. Don't want to go all the way to the bottom. Got to have something there, right? Some kind of something. Take our knife, scrape up all these little sticks and twigs and all sorts of little things that grow among the trees. Then we can go back in and fix them, just like this. Take the bottom of them. Very softly, very gently, pull it out. These guys we don't even have to worry about. That guy's fine over there, looks really good. All right, let's sign the sucker. We'll call it good for today. Can't wait to see everyone else's versions. What should we call this? What should we title it? What should we title it is the question. Open to suggestions. 
Your guys' suggestions are usually horrible, but we're open to Tucked away. Tucked away. I like that. Let's see. It's not dark as I want it over here. There we go. John Krasniak says, Josh London and chat. Everyone have a great week. Yeah, thanks guys for uh, sticking with us and watching and interacting with us. We love you guys. Really appreciate when everyone watches and tunes in and we all have a good time. And this one turned out really good. I really like it. I really like it. Me dos. You dos. Mm -hmm. Like the, the computer dos? No, like the number. Oh, dos. I got you, baby. There we go. What do you think? Stunning. Stunning, she says. Ooh, it looks good on the camera. Look at that. Look at those colors. See, when you're up close, you don't you can't really tell too much. You know what I mean? I love the little chopping block back there. This was a great painting all around, guys. Thank you for helping me make it look just like this. Because it was you guys and your suggestions that put this one together this week. So, congrats to you. You guys did a good job. Good job, team. You guys did well. This looks really neat. Almost like the, there's a cliff on the other side of this that just falls off. Maybe there's distance in between. The next little bit of trees come up. So clean. You don't even really need to finish it. Don't have to finish it off the edges. It just looks fantastic. Wow. Wow as if. Let's finish this little bush over on this side. There we go. Nothing else really. Like that. There we go. Those. Just make it a little bit darker. And then we'll be done, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Obviously, support my store. The more you guys shop my Etsy store or my Amazon affiliate store, uh, you know, the more canvases I can buy and keep bringing you free videos. So, if you like the free videos, if you want to continue to see them, I've got to buy canvases, right? Which means I need sales. It's also Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend. Uh, I've got 25% off in my Etsy store right now. I've had prints for like $20. They can ship to freaking Australia if you want. Total... Worldwide shipping available. Everything is there, so go check it out. Paintwithjosh.etsy.com What else do we have to say, babe? Will babe? you be showing this over? So it'll be on my Facebook page, and it'll be on my YouTube channel. Um, once the lives are done and it processes for a minute or two, then it will go up there, and uh, you'll be able to see it. So paint with Josh, you know, Facebook.com slash paint with Josh, YouTube.com slash C slash paint with Josh. So if you're not watching in one place, you can watch it in another place. But besides that, I don't know that I like them being so thick. So we're just gonna work those down here. There we go. I like it. Looks good. Looks awesome, dude. Alright. Well, thank you everyone who stuck around. Maybe this one will be up for raffle or something. Robin, you can also go over to YouTube and for $7.99, you can sign up for Josh's classes. That's true. That's, I always forget that. That's just him. I don't speak in there. I'm not present in case my voice annoys you. Yeah, someone said it was that London was distracting. And I was like, well, if you pay for the channel, it's just me. How can they say that to you, babe? You're not distracting to me. Aw. Oh. Sometimes you are. Not. <laughs> I'm just playing. I just kid, I kid, I love London so much. Like seriously guys, without her, I wouldn't be able to do all well, these things and respond. Qu be quiet, I'm already zoomed in in the painting. You lost your chance oh. to be on the Well, they can still be hear your camera. But oh, yeah. yeah, without London, I could not do all these things that I do and bring you guys all these videos. She is 100% vital to the program. I love you guys, goodbye. No, wait, oh. I'm leaving? I zoomed in already. Oh, I just, I love it. It just looks so clean. Okay, look, your face is back. Like it. Oh, my Bloop. face. Okay. All right, well, we'll say goodbye. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you, uh, hope you guys learned something. And if not, you can check out any of my other videos. And I've okay. got, you know, more Kay. than 150. Kay Campbell says she loves my accent. She loves what? My accent. Oh, I just, I love it. That's why I married London, because of her accent. Cute. Okay. Come on, camera, babe. No! Yeah. No! 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 Squeezes. No! Love you guys. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye, this. Available on Etsy.